Have you ever wondered what happens when a disgraced YouTuber decides to lock himself in one of the most haunted houses on the planet with nothing but a live stream to keep him company? Well, you're about to find out. But before we jump into this ghastly adventure, remember, if you're the type of person who thinks performing a seance in a haunted mansion is a good way to spend a Saturday night, then you've definitely come to the right place. We're all about making questionable life choices here, and we upload new tales of terror every week to prove it. So if you're ready to join us on this spooky journey, why not do something truly terrifying and hit that like button with the energy of a poltergeist throwing a tantrum? Don't forget to subscribe and turn on all notifications, unless you want Mildred's ghost to mistake you for her next pen pal. At the outset of our tale, we're introduced to Sean, a once revered YouTuber, whose reputation plummeted faster than his ability to rationalize his questionable life choices. Known for his daredevil antics designed to confront his own phobias, Sean's career hit a snag following a stunt gone awry, spiraling into a controversy that effectively cleared his digital arena of both sponsors and a significant chunk of his fan base. Fast forward six months, and we find Sean, a man haunted not just by the specters of the internet, but by an actual fear of ghosts ready to stage his grand comeback. In a move that screams desperation louder than a banshee in the night, he vows to live stream an overnight stay in the notoriously eerie Death Manor, a place that whispers tales of past horrors and unspeakable tragedies. With the hopes of regaining his lost popularity and clinching a deal with a new sponsor, Sean's plan is simple, yet foolhardy. He must investigate any paranormal activity within the manor's decrepit walls to earn his keep. The stakes, his pride, his dwindling fanbase, and possibly his sanity. As the live stream kicks off, Sean hurls his car's spark plugs into the void of the surrounding woods, severing his retreat path. Marching towards the manor, Sean narrates the dark lore of Death Manor, with the flair of a tour guide in the underworld. The tale of Mildred, the owner's daughter whose life ended in tragedy within these very walls, marks the beginning of a series of deaths that cloak the house in a macabre mystique. Setting up a camera outside, Sean announces that all cameras are motion activated, winking to the viewers at home. As Sean steps over the threshold into the dimly lit confines of Death Manor, he locks the door and casts the key into the abyss of a grate, severing his last tie to the outside world. He narrates the chilling postscript of Mildred's demise, revealing that the manor was the final resting place for 11 more souls before silence and cobwebs claimed it in 1956. The stream, punctuated by Sean's interactions with his digital audience, becomes a bridge between the living and the spectral. Sean announces his intention to monitor three rooms notorious for their unwillingness to let the past die. The master bedroom, with its history of hauntings, is his first target. Here, he recounts the eerie tale of Max Lowland, whose 1910 nightmare of a faceless spectre whispering cryptic messages from the room's north corner foreshadowed his own death in sleep a year later. The narrative deepens with the mention of a 1995 paranormal investigation that captured an image of this very apparition, a link to the otherworldly that Sean can't resist. Yet as Sean's recounting reaches a crescendo, a sudden thud shatters the silence, sending him sprinting from the room in panic. Recovering, he guides his audience to the site of Mildred's tragic end, a place where despair hangs as heavily as the dust in the air. Ascending to the second floor, Sean's expedition delves deeper into the heart of Death Manor's tragic past, arriving at the nursery, a room saturated with the silent echoes of innocence lost. Here, he shares a harrowing account of five young lives cut short, their spirits perhaps still wandering within these walls. Sean plays a video from a 1990s ghost hunting expedition, capturing a moment when a little girl glimpses something unseen, something that belongs neither to the world of the living, nor to the peace of the afterlife. Continuing his journey, Sean steps into a bathroom, the site of the manor's most recent known tragedy, here, in 1995, the life of another soul was claimed by the clawfoot bathtub, now standing as a silent witness to despair. As Sean positions another camera, he plays a recording where the disembodied voices of Mama and the cryptic mention of pond water were captured, adding layers to the mansion's tapestry of sorrow. While navigating the corridors to set up the remaining cameras, Sean recounts the tale of Mildred, whose heart ached with the yearnings of unrequited love. For eight years, she filled the solitude of the manor with verses of love unattained, until fate in the form of the dashing publisher Lars Jorgensen, intervened. Their love, blossoming through a constant exchange of letters, adds a tragic romance to the manor's lore, a story of love found and lost within its cursed walls. In his search for a haven within the haunted halls, Sean declares one room as a sanctuary from the paranormal, a place untouched by the manor's restless spirits. Here, amidst his setup, he discovers a closet hiding a strange symbol. In a moment of disregard, he takes it out and throws it on the floor. As the night in Death Manor deepens, Sean's connection to the outside world remains tethered to the chat screen. It's here, amidst the spectral silence that a viewer's dare slices through, to provoke the spirits that might linger within these cursed walls. Undeterred, or perhaps driven by the invisible audience's clamor for thrill, 
Sean delves deeper into the tragic tale of Mildred and Lars. Their love story, marked by letters and a promise of union, culminates in despair as Lars's untimely death shatters their dreams, leading Mildred to her mournful fate. Sean's theory is that Mildred's spirit seeks to recreate the family she lost. Sean places a found doll on a chair, a symbolic offering to the spirits he seeks to communicate with through a seance. The air grows thick with anticipation, a charged silence that is suddenly broken by a loud thud, sending a jolt of fear through Sean, propelling him into a self-imposed exile within the safety of his designated safe room. The chat, ever hungry for more, becomes an echo chamber of encouragement and speculation, sending Sean photos of mysterious figures lurking just beyond the veil of his camera's eye. The discovery of a shadowy figure entering a room on his recording sends Sean spiraling into terror, a fear that drives him into the confines of a closet, a childlike refuge from the unknown. Yet, the chat's insistent curiosity coaxes him out, only for the sound of another thud and the sudden appearance of an intruder to send him retreating once more. The banging on his door, the crescendo of his night of horrors, culminates not in a spectral confrontation, but in the revelation of Chrissy, a superfan whose admiration for Sean drove her to breach the eerie solitude of Death Manor. Chrissy becomes Sean's unexpected partner in ghost hunting. Her arrival, initially met with fear and skepticism, quickly turns into an opportunity as Sean's view count surges to numbers that would make any digital heart flutter. The audience, ever thirsty for more, casts their digital votes in favor of Chrissy's stay, tying her fate to Sean's. Equipped with a camera and a newfound purpose, Sean and Chrissy venture deeper into the haunted narrative of the manor, setting their sights on the master bedroom. In a moment straight out of a ghost hunter's tale, Chrissy vanishes only to reappear, a trick of the shadows or perhaps something more. Their exploration leads them to a secret room hidden within a closet. Within the bowels of the manor, they stumble upon a chest cradling Mildred's poetry book. Sean, perhaps too caught up in the thrill of discovery, dismisses the poetry as mediocre, a judgment hastily made amidst the adrenaline of the hunt. Their encounter with a dead animal, a macabre reminder of the manor's grim atmosphere, sends them scrambling back to the perceived safety of the upper floors. The knight's endeavor takes a more solemn turn as they attempt to commune with Mildred's spirit through a spirit board. Chrissy coaxes Sean into reciting a Latin phrase intended to lay the ghost to rest. The tension mounts as a thud echoes through the manor, suggesting the presence of something unseen. Despite Chrissy's urging, Sean refuses to investigate the bathroom, opting instead to monitor from a distance. The planchette moves of its own volition, marking the presence of an unseen force. Sean's attention, momentarily diverted, returns to the screens only to find Chrissy has vanished from view, leaving no trace behind. This disappearance under the watchful eyes of a live audience amplifies the night's eerie undertone, blending the lines between showmanship and genuine terror. The tranquility of the haunted night shatters as Sean's quest to find Chrissy turns into a nightmare within the already cursed walls of Death Manor. His relief at finding her alive quickly morphs into terror as their reunion takes a dark turn. Chrissy attacks him, biting his neck with ferocity. In a desperate bid for survival, Sean's response is equally violent, a momentary act of self-defense that leaves him believing he has killed her. Fleeing to the safety of his sanctuary, he implores his digital audience, his only link to the outside world, to call for help. However, the manor refuses to release its grip on reality. Returning to confront the aftermath of his actions, Sean finds nothing but empty air where Chrissy's body once lay. The sight of Mildred's lifeless form, suspended in a perpetual dance with death, blocks his path, a barrier that seems to mock his every move. In the chat, a video message unveils the significance of the symbol that Sean had discarded earlier. This token, meant to ward off evil, had been his unwitting protector until he cast it aside, unleashing forces he scarcely comprehends. The realization that he has disturbed a delicate balance fills Sain with dread, a fear that amplifies as Mildred's spectral form launches an assault, culminating in a bizarre and unsettling encounter that leaves Sain unconscious. Upon awakening to a reality more nightmarish than before, Sean's struggle for freedom is fraught with terror and confusion. The discovery of a box, a severed finger, and a photograph reveal the true identity of Chrissy as Mildred Pratt, a revelation that blurs the lines between past and present. His attempt to flee, a frantic dash for escape, is thwarted at every turn by ghostly apparitions, driving him back to the illusion of safety in his safe room. In a final twist of fate, the chat reveals the true nature of the Latin phrase Sean had recited, a soul offering used by Mildred to bind the souls of the manor's previous occupants to her own tormented existence. This realization, that his actions have entangled him further into the manor's cursed legacy, leaves Sean trapped in a nightmare of his own making. As the night's horrors escalate, Sean's ordeal takes a dire turn, mirrored by the growing hostility in the chat. The digital realm becomes a source of torment, echoing with hate comments that fuel his despair. Amidst this digital backlash, a chilling call of his name pierces the silence, heralding another encounter with Mildred's malevolent spirit. Terrified, Sean's survival instincts kick in, propelling him to a desperate escape through the second floor window, a leap from the nightmarish into the unknown. In the eerie calm of the manor's surroundings, Sean's frantic search for the spark plugs becomes a symphony of fear. His discovery of the plugs is short-lived, 
As a ghoul emerges to haunt his steps, the safety of his car seems within reach until a fall brings him face to face with what appears to be salvation. A cop, this flicker of hope is extinguished when the cop reveals himself as yet another ghoul, forcing Sean into a flight fueled by sheer terror. In the claustrophobic sanctuary of his car, the chat serves as an unlikely guide, delivering a video message from the Hamza lady. Her tale reveals her encounter with Mildred and the creation of a ward to contain her malevolent powers. Her warning, that countering such dark forces demands a sacrifice of flesh, hangs in the air like a grim prophecy. The night's surreal battle continues as Sean, armed with nothing but a potato gun found in his car, defends himself against the ghoul's onslaught. The altercation leaves his iPad, and by extension his connection to the outside world, damaged, isolating him further in his fight against the darkness. Retreating to the dubious safety of his car, Sean turns to Mildred's poetry book, seeking answers in its verses. What he discovers is an incantation hidden within the poetry that Mildred used to summon her satanic powers. The ghostly whispers that have haunted the manor, echoing through its halls, find their origin in one of these poems. Sean uncovers the true essence of Mildred's unrest, not a yearning for familial bonds, but a desire for an audience to witness her poetic endeavors. This insight sparks a daring plan, leveraging his digital following as a force to counteract Mildred's malevolent grip. With newfound resolve, Sean re-enters the manor, arming himself with an eclectic arsenal found within its walls, prepared to confront the darkness head-on. Upon reaching his makeshift sanctuary, the realization that his ordeal continues to captivate a global audience reignites Sean's determination. The discovery of a spare iPad becomes his Excalibur as he sifts through the comments for the translated incantation needed to banish Mildred back to the depths from which she came. Sean addresses his past indiscretions, acknowledging his role in the spread of insensitivity and vowing to emerge from this night a changed man. Yet as he prepares to face Mildred, he finds himself ensnared by her spectral influence. Through sheer will, Sean breaks free only to be assailed by a ghoul. Resourcefulness and holy water become his weapons, turning the tide in his favor. The confrontation with Mildred reaches its zenith as Sean, employing a mix of desperation and ingenuity, manages to momentarily subdue her with a camera and the symbolic trappings of the ritual. The incantation initially failing signals not defeat, but the preamble to a more desperate struggle for survival. Mildred's liberation from her temporary bonds leads to an intense clash that pushes Sean to the brink. Sean's epiphany, that the ritual demands a flesh sacrifice, transforms despair into action. With the grim resolve of a man who has faced the abyss and refused to blink, Sean makes the ultimate sacrifice, severing his own finger to complete the ritual. This act, a testament to his determination, seals Mildred's fate, dragging her into the abyssal depths of a blood-filled basement, her screams echoing into silence. Triumphant yet battered, Sean's celebration is as much for his survival as it is for the solidarity of his viewers, whose digital presence became the lifeline that pulled him from the precipice. Yet, as he steps into the dawn of a new day, the remnants of Mildred's spectral legend, a ghoul audience with unfinished business encircle him a chilling reminder that some stories do not end with the closing of a book. As the live stream abruptly cuts, the fate of scene remains a whispered question in the digital ether, leaving his audience in suspenseful limbo.